what's happening. This is Joshua Boetsy and you're watching Sports and Icons. Okay, so the Ring Magazine have just announced their new top 10. Ordinarily, I probably wouldn't do a video on this one because I'm not really too interested in pound for pound, but it seems a lot of you are, especially across social media, hence this video. So I'm going to go through the top 10 and have a bit of a chat about it. So in at number 10, pound for pound for the Ring Magazine, Chocolatito, Roman Gonzalez. Number nine, the Tartan Tornado, Josh Taylor. Number eight, the Canelo Slayer, Dimitri Bivol. Number seven, Vasily Lomachenko. Number six, Canelo Alvarez. Number five, Juan Francisco Estrada. Number four, Errol Spence Jr. Number three, Naoa Inoue. Number two, Terence Burke Crawford. And number one, Alexander Usyk. There you have it. So that is the top 10 for The Ring magazine. I suppose a big talking point. Well, there's probably a couple on here right now. Um, but Canelo Alvarez, previously pound for pound number one on Ring Magazine, dropped all the way down to number six because he just lost to Dimitri Bivol. In a weight class that really he had no business being at. He's still undisputed super middleweight world champion and his resume does not get deleted because he took a loss in a weight division that he had no business being in, as I've just previously said. So is it fair that he drops down to number six? No, I think that's a little that's a little low for Canelo Alvarez. Is this punishment because of the link between Ring Magazine and Oscar De La Hoya? Maybe, maybe. But at the same time, should he be pound for pound number one? I mean, arguably, but I would certainly drop him down at least one or two positions because he has just lost. And I think that would be a fair thing to do. It would be a fair thing to do. But at the same time, I think that they've uh, treated him quite disrespectfully when it comes to pound for pound. Not that the pound for pound needs to be treating anybody with respect because at the end of the day, pound for pound means what? Absolutely nothing. There's no title for it. There's no award for it. There's no nothing for it. Okay. Anyway, the number one, Alexander Usyk, heavyweight, currently a heavyweight. Should he be pound for pound number one? Or should he be behind a Terence Crawford well, it depends on how you look at it. Personally, one of the things that when I think about pound for pound, I do not do heavyweights. I don't because it defeats the whole purpose of the pound for pound, doesn't it? That, that, that's why it was created, okay, to give other people some shining light where the heavyweights were the ones getting all the traction. So I'm kind of old school in that mentality, I suppose. But if any heavyweight does deserve to be the, the number one, it probably would be Alexander Usyk because he's a multi-weight world champion. Former undisputed cruiserweight world champion. Never mind the amateur career of the Olympic gold medal and all the other kind of uh, trophies and trinkets and belt medals that he won. But the fact that he done all that at cruiserweight, he went to all the champions backyards. He went to Poland to defeat Glowacki. He went to America to defeat Michael Hunter. He went to Germany to defeat Marco Huck. He went to Latvia to defeat Maris Bredis. He went to Russia to defeat Murat Gassiev. He went to the UK to defeat Tony Belli, Derek Chisora and Anthony Joshua. So if anybody in the heavyweight division does deserve to be number one, it would be Usyk. But then you could flip it and say, but this is a ring magazine, pound for pound list. And they put Usyk, a heavyweight, as pound for pound number one, when their ring magazine heavyweight world champion is Tyson Fury. So why is Tyson Fury not on here? Tyson Fury has won every belt that the heavyweight division has to offer. He's defeated every man he's faced. He's got a draw. He shouldn't have a draw. But still, he avenged that draw with back-to-back -back knockout wins. But there again, should Tyson Fury be on here? Because he's only had a career as heavyweight. There's always going to be that argument. So that is certainly going to be a talking point. The fact that they've got Alexander Usyk as pound for pound number one on there. Phenomenal fighter. Again, you see, this goes back to what it was that, that I've been saying before, where people say, oh, Anthony Joshua, he's exposed quite clearly. He's a bum. He's no good. He just lost to a cruiser. What are you talking about? He's lost to, currently, the pound for pound number one in the world, Alexander Usyk. At what point is that a shame that an Anthony Joshua should lose to an Usyk? Strange, isn't it? But I suppose a couple of points on this one. Number eight, Dimitri Bivol. 
he has defeated Canelo. Does he deserve a top 10 pound for pound status? Yeah, why not? Why not? But at the same time, as Bivol did say, was it yesterday or the day before, he said that he shouldn't really be spoken about in pound for pound because he needs more quality names on his own resume. This is what he said. But even though he's defeated Canelo Alvarez, he's still a couple of positions behind Canelo Alvarez on the pound for pound list. But again, is that because Bivol is a one-weight world champion? Could be. But with that reasoning in mind, let's move on to Errol Spence Jr. Number four. Don't take the piss. Errol Spence Jr. has had a career of ducking Terence Crawford. And he's a fighter who's been going backwards. I know some Errol Spence Jr. fans don't want to hear it. I don't particularly want to say it because I like Errol Spence Jr. I really do. But... He's been going backwards. Ever since he fought Kell Brook, he stepped backwards. And I've been saying this for the past year or two now. He's going backwards. He fought Kell Brook. Well, who else has he fought since then? Sean Porter. Cool. Yeah, Kell Brook defeated Sean Porter. So that's going backwards, isn't it? Who else has he defeated? Danny Garcia. Ugas. Okay. Two guys who... Sean Porter defeated. So again, going backwards. So I don't understand why he's number four. For what reason? He's a one-weight world champion, unified champion, of course. He's been doing everything that he can to avoid Terence Bo Crawford, which is a shame because if anybody can beat Crawford, it may well be him. He's never moved up to challenge himself. So why is he number four? I don't agree with that. At all. Again, we can go down the list a little bit. Look at Vasil Lomachenko, number seven. Well, why is Tiafimo Lopez not above him? Who defeated him? Why is he not on the top ten? Why is Tiafimo Lopez not on there? Oh, is that because he lost to George Cambosis Jr.? But where's George Cambosis Jr. on this top ten? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. See, this is the thing about pound for pound lists. They're all subject. All subjective, sorry. It's all opinionated. There's no merits and balances and statistics to work it out. And most people who talk about pound for pound couldn't have no business talking about pound for pound because they can't go through each and every weight class and start breaking down resumes. They can't they cannot do it. If you can't do it, you have no business talking about pound for pound. You really don't. Josh Taylor, number nine. Listen, I've been saying Josh Taylor is a top 10 pound for pound fighter for quite some time now. But he did lose to Jack Catterall. He did. I was picking Josh Taylor to win the fight, so my prediction is correct in some ways. But most people can agree that Jack Catterall defeated him. But officially, he didn't. Is that why they're looking at it this way? Officially, they didn't. But he does have that cloud over him now. He does. Roman Gonzalez, number 10. Yeah, he's definitely a top 10 pound pound fighter. I know people say, but, it, but he lost twice to uh, Rungvisai. Once on points, once by knockout. Okay, it happens. You know, people lose and people lose by knockout. It happens. But since then, he's come back and he's right back in the mix. It's not his fault that uh, that, that uh, third fight with Juan Francisco Estrada didn't go ahead. And the way that he handled Martinez was like Martinez was nothing. And we all know how good Martinez is. So yeah, I can totally agree. Roman Gonzalez should be in the top 10. Without a doubt, he should be in the top 10. So, so should Estrada. Listen, I don't have too much of a problem with the top 10. Um, I really don't. But I don't like the order too much. I will say that much. I don't like the order. I think Canelo Alvarez is too low. Could takes one loss. Oh well, let's forget about his previous record, shall we? Let's forget about that because he lost in a division that he shouldn't have been in. Well done, Ring Magazine. Well done. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you on the next video.